pretty cool that kind of led into this uh, discussion. A little bit about myself, I'm a uh, security threat analyst, uh, mainly handling uh, customer submitted malware samples right now for Fish Labs. Uh, as of June 6th, I've been there for about three years. And uh, one of my passions about uh, malware hunting is uh, also taking a look at uh, PHP uh, and finding vulnerabilities within those uh, malware C2 panels. So I'll talk a little bit about that too in my talk. Um, being a drummer, I'm a huge uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers fan, so uh, I really like Chad Smith. Uh, definitely want to be like him. <laughs> right so today we'll talk about uh, why uh, miscreants are utilizing mobile remote access Trojans for uh, account takeover. Um, we'll talk about three different families. How are these being spread in the wild? Um, have some examples of some previous campaigns. Uh, we'll talk about the command and control infrastructure. Uh, mitigations of that, you know, if you're an organization who's thinking about uh, switching to two-factor or if you already have. Um, we'll talk about, you know, some of the means of uh, combating some of these attacks on the mobile side. And uh, my personal passion, as I already, uh, you know, talked about, is the uh, vulnerabilities of these uh, malware families. So we'll get into that as well. <clears throat> First, a little disclaimer. Um, since some of the... Uh, there are some live links maybe in my presentation, so you definitely don't want to visit those on your uh, mobile device. Uh, <laughs> we will also uh, be talking about exploitation of um, and proof of concepts of uh, live malware, so do not try that at home unless you like to be visited uh, with men in suits. So as uh, financial institutions implement two-factor, uh, these uh, miscreants are utilizing this for account takeover. No longer is the possibility of solely uh, getting the username and password for account takeover uh, necessary for a full account compromise. So uh, anyone in here have a Google account? <laughs> yeah, several folks, right? Has everyone implemented two-factor on that? Yeah? How about LastPass? <laughs> Recent breach with them, right? Um, so they came back and said, yeah, um, definitely want to implement two-factor with that. But that's not the end-all to be-all, right? <clears throat> One of the main issues that we see with some of these financial institutions, their user base is already uh, used to going out to third-party uh, stores to look for the unofficial application for that site. So you have Joe Schmo that realizes with a customer um, of XYZ Bank, uh, there's not an official application. So this user base is already used to finding these uh, unofficial applications in third-party repositories or even the official ones. And it's a very low entry point for uh, miscreants to get into this type of malware. Um, some of the families I'll talk about, they're freely available, well not freely, but they're uh, relatively inexpensive and low entry point compared to your uh, PC man in the browser malware. There's also a lack of uh, mobile uh, antivirus adoption. I'll show you some slides here of uh, recent samples that have hit virus total, and we'll take a look at the, uh, the signature um, count of how many AVs actually are popping for these uh, types of families. Kaspersky put out, put out a uh, very interesting report um, uh, last quarter of 2014. They said one in five Android users have encountered some type of mobile threat in that last year. So you're, you're starting to see that ecosystem evolve. And uh, definitely see more as, uh, you know, especially developing nations, they might not have the, uh, uh, the financial backing to purchase a full-blown PC. What are they turning to? Mobile devices to access that internet. I'll take you through the uh, steps of a traditional fish account takeover. So our evil miscreant here on the left sends out a spam campaign that contains a link to a fish. Our victim clicks on, clicks on that link. Looks just like the, uh, the banking website that he's used to logging into. Plugs in his username and password, right? Sent back to the miscreant. One other uh, attack, now we're talking about mobile attacks themselves, is uh, you may have run across them on the internet. You can create an account on a website and uh, you know, plug in a URL and it creates a Android application that's automatically shipped off to the stores. Uh, so in some of the attacks that we've seen, uh, one issue of concern is uh, utilizing these store wrappers, as we call them, uh, to wrap uh, the actual phishing site. Um, so there's been a couple examples that I've uh, ran across. 
where uh, Ms. Grant was using a compromised website to host a phishing form, just a username and password login form. He wrapped that in the Android application and it was pushed to Google Play as XYZ Bank. Users you know, looking for that application on the official Play Store uh, then downloaded that and, and divulged their credentials. But as that uh, bank implements two-factor, let's, let's take a walk through this. Begins with uh, the normal spam campaign or PC malware, uh, as I'll show you with one of the families. Sent to the victim, captures that username and password, and is also sent back to the miscreant. But now that phishing site also gives some verbiage about, well, you need to download our new mobile application to make you more secure, right? in order to capture that SMS. Most of these, by the way, are uh, solely to capture that SMS one-time pin, right? And as that SMS is sent to the, uh, the victim, since that uh, miscreant has a remote access Trojan on the mobile device, he now has a copy of that pin. So that's essentially all the pieces of the pie for uh, bypassing two-factor. Any questions on that campaign style? Good. Good. <laughs> this was, uh, yeah, I didn't draw them by hand. I'm not that talented. Um, I f forget which website. It was like free graphic, open graphics, um, released under uh, common license or something like that. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Can yeah. I actually, uh, can I retweet that picture? Because I have that t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, everything's up. I used to wear it for project management. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Read the fucking manual. That's right. All day. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so most of the time, there's a there's a time in between the when the SMS is sent and when it's you know the, the time that it's still good. So, right. So, how quickly does that they have that quickly be able to take advantage? Yeah, cause it, um, absolutely. So the question was, what is the time frame from, uh, uh, or the duration of the timeout for that SMS pin, correct? Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of the mitigation factors. And I uh, uh, haven't studied actually you know, with most systems. Uh, I think Google Authenticator even is 24 hours, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I may be wrong in that, but generally there's some leeway um, with the, uh, the duration. And uh, as one of the mit mitigation factors, we'll talk about you know, decreasing that value as well. So how are these remote access Trojans being presented to the users as official applications? Uh, one other method that they're utilizing is a uh, method known as binding. Uh, so taking a look at the PC malware in comparison, uh, you may know of it as uh, packing an executable. Uh, whereas with, um, on the Android side, we call it binding. A lot of the toolkits, um, so this is actually a screen of one of the uh, remote ac access Trojan C2s. It handles APK uh, generation for the actual uh, malware. Uh, and it also, you're able to upload or bind this application with an official looking uh, application um, that the user would be then tricked into installing on their system. Another screenshot of another binder here. <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about the two different uh, communication and control uh, types. Uh, just with uh, PC, remote access Trojans, uh, I like to break those in pretty much the same categories. You have your Java C2, which runs on PC. Uh, and one of the families that we'll talk about there is the Andro Rat, also known as uh, Sandro Rat Android Jack, um, which is now um, able to be uh, downloaded from their website. The other C2 type, the one that I like to uh, find vulnerabilities in, is the, the PHP panel variety. So these are hosted on you know, compromised uh, VPSs or websites that the miscreants have uh, you know, unzipped that, the PHP website to in order to have C2 from these compromised uh, mobile devices. Two families we'll talk about here is iBanking and Dendroid. Taking a look at the, uh, the Java C2, again, the evil miscreant actually hosts the server on the, their PC. They have to port forward uh, you know, that from the internet to have it routable back to the PC. Usually you see these set up with uh, some sort of dynamic DNS account, like uh, no IP or uh, you know, DynDNS, one of those uh, free services for dynamic DNS hosting. Um, so it begs the question too, running this type of uh, C2 on the uh, computer, 
does that open up to the miscreant to uh, you know application vulnerabilities? Um, there's a really good talk recently, I think at B sides London, um, a uh, researcher was talking about some of the uh, exploits in oh shit I forget um, one of the uh, uh, PC. It'll come to mind, I'm sure, after I finish talking about it. But uh, anyways, one of the uh, remote access Trojans for PCs, he was able to find a uh, file download vulnerability. Uh, so any request that he sent to the server, he was able to download any file from that computer. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty neat. Man, I can't remember the name of it now. But all right, I digress. So. Also, there's these you know, websites uh, or hack forms, semi-underground, where these uh, families have been leaked out. Um, you know, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the malware, the rats that you see on there are backdoored by the people that are releasing them for free, right? You get nothing for free, right? So. One of the huge issues with this, since we're hosting it on the PC side, is that it's extremely flood susceptible. Oops. Now let's talk about the uh, PHP C2. Panels, as they're referred to in the, uh, the underground vernacular. Um, one of the huge issues with this is lack of input validation. So you have everything from you know, SQL injection, shell upload, uh, remote and local uh, file inclusion. Uh, it's also you know, being hosted on uh, usually um, scarce resources on a compromised site or VPS. Uh, definitely susceptible to layer 7 flooding or HTTP flooding. One of the first families we'll talk about is uh, AndroRat. This is uh, an, an example of the uh, Java C2 I was talking about earlier. First uh, discovered it in the wild August 2014, uh, targeted uh, Polish financial institutions. And this is actually the, the lure, email lure on the right, uh, masqueraded as a, uh, an official um, notice from Kaspersky saying, hey, you need to download our latest uh, Android security application. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of fuzzed out, but it's, you know, .apk there. <clears throat> and then, uh, let's see, uh, this also targeted German financial institutions, and that was uh, masqueraded as a, a Google service framework update. Okay. The actual attribution of this uh, is from a gentleman in China, or I'm sorry, not China, but India, and he uh, is now using it's now called uh, DroidJack. <clears throat> Some of the capabilities of this remote access Trojan, uh, complete file manager, SS SMS interception, of course, two-factor bypass, IM spying, contacts grabbing, GPS tracking, records calls and audio, right? Uh, remote bug, if you, if you will. Same thing with the video, remote spy cam. Here's what I was talking about. Available now at droidjack.net for the lifetime price of $210. You can own this Trojan. Is that USD? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Another uh, screenshot here, too, on the left of the actual uh, Java C2 that's running on the uh, PC. So it handles everything from not only the, uh, the bot check-in, uh, APK generation, binding, and so forth. Still very prevalent. I pull these uh, stats on Thursday. Um, so source being a virus total intelligence for this. Um, still uh, very widely seen in the wild. So in the lab, I uh, set up, um, fun thing about what I do is being able to play with these uh, families. And you know, wanted to mimic uh, how long would it take for a simple um, sin flood to knock one of these offline. It really didn't take that much at all. Um, so again, being you know a Java-based application um, and you know poor uh, coding standards, these guys aren't necessarily going through quality assurance compared to an actual uh, product that's being released, um, you know, officially or legitimately in in the uh, ecosystem. So, any questions on Droidjack? Good to go. Next family I'll talk about is uh, iBanking. So this targeted financial institutions in 2013 and is still very active today, uh, mainly in Europe and Asia where uh, most financial institutions have implemented two-factor, right? Not so much of a big deal right now in the US because unfortunately we haven't really uh, uh, jumped on that bandwagon. Famously used by the NeverQuest, also known as Voltrack Crew. Is anyone familiar with that malware family? 
by chance? Not too many folks? Okay, cool. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. <clears throat> when this was initially sold, you could tell that the, the, the end buyer uh, that was you know, purchasing this crimeware kit um, was solely set up with crimeware intentions. Uh, you know, these other families have really nice, slick GUIs, and uh, it's mainly to attract that, that noob customer, right? But with this family, solely being uh, sold for crimeware. Um, so you'll see the UI is not that slick, um, but they have features like, well, after a campaign's over, I want, I want to delete all traces of this Trojan on the device. So you, you'll start to see some of that more uh, anti-forensic capabilities in this type of family. Source code was leaked in 2014, and of course, you know, especially with uh, crimeware, um, as an example, the, uh, the Zeus malware, um, as soon as you release a, uh, a leaked copy like that, it spawns several variants for that. So we're starting to see that now, of course. <clears throat> so going back to Voltrack, um, Voltrack is a man in the browser uh, PC malware family. What that means is as a uh, computer is infected, as that victim visits a website, there are uh, specific JavaScript inject injections that are uh, injected into that stream to uh, not only grab the username and password, but they might also um, grab uh, or prompt for all your user information, credit card numbers, um, list goes on. So taking a look at um, one of the Voltrack configurations that was pushed out uh, about a month or two ago, we saw a bunch of PNG uh, Base64 encoded strings within this uh, Voltrack config. So I pulled that down, scraped the, uh, uh, you know, the, the image Base64, um, decoded that out, and dumped it to disk, and I started looking at these images here. Facebook OTP, or one-time password. It's like, oh, okay, interesting. Some other pictures here that were decoded. So what we're seeing here is the actual uh, picture uh, decoded injection for the instructions of how to install this Facebook application from an infected uh, Voltrack uh, victim computer. Does that make sense? Good again. <clears throat> All right. So give, give you a little background on this. You know, I, I went back after taking a look and uh, seeing these images that were decoded. There were uh, some, a couple of obfuscated lines of uh, JavaScript in there, decoded those, and sure enough, there was a hot link to an actual APK download. Grab that. Anyone in here has done uh, APK decompilation? Is Jason in here? Jason. A little bit? So essentially with uh, an APK, you can actually reverse it to somewhat readable Java or small code. Um, so you, you run a decompiler on that and uh, just grepped out any um, URLs and sure enough, I plugged in that URL, uh, you know, of course, preserve an OPSEC uh, in the browser, but uh, took a look and it was the iBanking login. So uh, the iBanking family still, you know, that was two months ago from a Voltrack config that's still being used in the wild. Some of the features of this family, capture SMS and call list, Send SMS, premium rate scans, if you will, right? Um, not so much big in the United States, but uh, overseas, there's the method of uh, doing transactions and sending money via SMS, actually. <clears throat> call phone numbers, premium rate scans. Incoming call redirects. So if, I, if I've compromised a device and I know that the bank is going to call that individual to verify a transfer that I, I made uh, um, fraudulently, why don't I just redirect that call to me? Yeah. That was my, uh, that was my uh, freaking transfer, right? <clears throat> Again, record calls and microphone. And you know, one of the biggest things I kind of touched on earlier, wipe all device data after I'm, I'm done with that particular victim. Still very prevalent, still fresh samples, hitting VT. So I talked about the, uh, the source code leak in late 2014, a uh, security research, researcher by the uh, handle of Xylitol uh, pulled this down and found a uh, unrestricted file upload vulnerability. Of course, it's being patched now in the wild, but um, just it goes to show you the lack of uh, input validation 
on these types of uh, you know C2s is uh, definitely uh, prevalent. Great site, by the way. What's up? Xylitol's blog. Oh, Xylitol, yeah, yeah, very, uh, very good malware researcher. Mm -hmm. And this is actually pictured down at the bottom. This is the uh, the login interface for uh, iBanking. Again, compared to the other families, you know, not too much splashy GUIs to uh, attract the noobs here. Um, kind of broken English, and your browser must be included cookies. I'm going to show you the uh, proof of concept. Um, again, this this has been patched, so. Um, Within uh, sendfile.php, what this uh, file was originally intended to, uh, to, uh, to perform was uh, any type of um, recorded uh, audio on the uh, uh, capture device was submitted to this and that, that would be uh, dropped into the sound directory on the server. Uh, so there was no type of uh, you know, file mime type checks. There was no type of... Um, uh, extension check. Uh, so what you can do is essentially upload PHP. Uh, in this example, uploading a PHP backdoor shell and then having um, you know full capabilities as the uh, privileged account of whatever's running in Apache uh, on that web server. <clears throat> Last thing we'll talk about is Dendroid. Um, March 2014, CERT India issued uh, quite a few warnings about this particular family. Uh, it was originally marketed for $300, and the, bi uh, the binder author um, actually seen some um, forum traffic between this particular author and um, uh, Android Rat, or uh, Droid Jack, right? Um, so they were going back and forth and discussing different methods of uh, how best to implement a binder. And so there's quite a few similarities between the binder of this family and uh, Droid Jack. Some of the features is probably the most feature rich uh, family for uh, mobile rats right now. Access to those call logs, call phone numbers, again, premium rate scans, um, <clears throat> open web pages. Um, you could probably think of some type of you know, social engineering uh, type of experiment that you can do with that. Record calls and microphone, intercept text messages, of course, um, exfil and upload files. We store everything on our device now. HTTP flooding, um, that was kind of a unique feature. I uh, haven't seen actually a DDoS uh, client uh, for mobile uh, implemented yet in one of these rats. And uh, one of the other unique features is that it actually has uh, hard-coded um, forensic capabilities for some of the, <clears throat> some of the uh, messaging apps like um, WhatsApp and whatnot. I can still, you know, passwords and stuff for some of those uh, well-known applications. Um, and of course, any type of like save form file in the browser and whatnot. Still very prevalent. This is probably the most prevalent out of all the families that I see. <clears throat> this is a screenshot of the actual C2. You know, again, compared to uh, iBanking, um, a lot of time went into the, uh, the JavaScript and the Ajax, but luckily what I'll show you is not too much QA went into the PHP uh, server-side code. So I'll talk about a vulnerability uh, there. Uh, again, you know, Google Maps, tracking your, your victims on a Google Map display, uh, several features within this particular family. So this panel uh, source code was actually not only the panel, but the, uh, the entire family itself from the APK generation, and the panel was leaked August of 2014 on GitHub. Uh, immediately pulled down the code and discovered a uh, PHP remote code execution vulnerability. So essentially how this works is the uh, <coughs> apply settings.php file. This was supposed to only be accessed uh, through the logged in admin, right? Um, but what you can do, since there is no check for that, this file writes anything to config.php. So now we're able to write uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, any text to a uh, PHP file, thus we have remote code execution. So in this example, um, I, I'm just pushing the, uh, take the, uh, the get parameter of C and I'm passing that to the system function for um, remote command execution. Once that config.php file is rewritten, um, it completely zeroes out everything. Um, so not only is this, you know, remote code execution, but it, essentially it's uh, denial of service. 
um, effectively ends this PHP panel's uh, existence because as that uh, config file is rewritten, it doesn't know how to talk to the database and it doesn't know how to uh, authenticate users and it just completely wipes out the panel. <clears throat> so it is quite noisy. Now we can run system commands. So Passin, uh, you know, earlier wrote the, uh, the get parameter of C, uh, passing that into the system function, and then being uh, able from there, any parameter that I specify, or argument rather for uh, uh, get parameter C, it will be uh, displayed and rendered back into the browser for uh, remote command execution. <clears throat> any questions on the family so far? No? So let's talk about some of the FUD when it comes to mobile malware. The thing is, is that these families take a high level of uh, social engineering for them to be implemented and for a successful campaign, right? When you think about it, a user has to not only download outside of the App Store, which is a flag on Android, although outside of the United States, they're already used to that, right? Um, especially overseas in uh, Asia, they don't actually ship with Google on the phones. Uh, so you already have third-party app stores uh, enabled by default. So that's one issue. <clears throat> Second issue is whenever that user is presented with, uh, you know, it, there's no hiding of all the permissions that these things, that these things request every permission available to it within the developer API. Um, so, you, you know, you'll take a look at that um, once you install it. I mean, it's everything under the sun that it requests permission to. And, of course, what do users do? Sure, okay. It happens. <clears throat> right now, with all these families, there's really no operating system level exploits. One thing that we will see, I think, is as mobile market uh, saturation uh, occurs, you know, as I discussed earlier, you know, some of the developing nations that are just now discovering the internet, they're not buying PCs, they're buying mobile devices. So I think these uh, types of rats uh, will definitely be uh, more prevalent in the future. And also, the, again, the uh, PC man of the browser crime where it's mad expensive, right, uh, for a successful campaign. But with these, not only can you find freely available or elite copies, the, uh, the entry point themselves are, you know, less than 300 uh, dollars just to get started. Touch a little bit on mitigation. We already mentioned a little bit earlier. And uh, so as your company is considering implementing two-factor, or if they already have, realizing that, you know, okay, well, we moved away from uh, maybe PC malware from the, the aspect of the only thing that's needed is username and password. So we defeated phishing, um, but we still see phishing attacks is the main issue. People still fish you even if you have, uh, you know, triple factor authentication, I think. Um, <clears throat> but the other realization is that as you uh, move into two-factor, you now have a new attack um, uh, source. So you need to uh, plan to mitigate those, um, you know, Android applications as well. So one thing you can also do is manage for spam bots and uh, demark for uh, brand attacks. <clears throat> Two-factor pin timeouts, we kind of mentioned that earlier. And finally, it's, it's up to us, too, to do, uh, communicate with our user base the dangers of allowing third-party installs and, of course, reporting any suspicious activity to our security operations centers. That's pretty much it for my talk, guys. I appreciate it. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, this is my uh, work email here, and I'm also on Twitter's. Any questions? Yeah. Have you dealt with two oh. rats on the same mobile device before? Two, sorry. So um, if one rat exists on a mobile device already, have you actually had an experience where you've either tried in a lab or you've seen another rat try to be installed on the same device? I have not. Are there conflicts? I've heard of malware taking over malware and things like that. Um, my guess is with uh, since we're talking about more of a sandbox environment on a mobile device, I don't think they would impact one another. At least I haven't seen it in the code. You know how some malware might actually check to see if there's other malware present and either kill that or, uh, you know, go away? Um, it isn't really the case with uh, mobile malware. 
Yeah, I've dealt with that in PC world a lot. Right. But mobile's another animal. Yeah, I haven't really seen that with that um, these particular families. Yeah. Yeah. Good question, though. Thank you. Any others? Good to go. Well, I thank you for your time. I'll be here all uh, all day. So feel free to stop by, hang out. Thank you. <laughs>